In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hey, hey, warrior saints. Welcome to St. George, the birthplace of the warrior saint movement, where we unleash our greatness by living a crucifixional life. I go every morning during the week, work week to Dunkin' Donuts to get my coffee. And the one that I always go to costs $2.27 for the coffee I like. I know that because I go there every day. Now, if you're like me, in your car you have an ashtray that, I'm not a smoker, I don't smoke cigarettes, so I don't use that ashtray. What do we put in it? Loose change. So my ashtray is full of all this loose change, it's overflowing, and the little door, you know, the little lid door won't close. On Monday, this past Monday, I found myself at a different Dunkin' Donuts than the, normal, the one I normally go to. And the only reason that's of value is because as I went through, I ordered the same coffee that I order every day and have for the last however many years, and I pull up to the window and he says, that will be $2.47. And I was like, what? Pay him $2.47, move on, get my coffee and go about my day. Now that was Monday. Wednesday, I happened to be at the same Dunkin' Donuts. Not my normal one, but this one that I'd gone to that was 20 cents more. And as I'm driving through, I make my orders, I'm driving up to the window, I open the change, let's get some of this change out of here. I took two dollar bills out and I'm gonna get the 47 cents. And I'm looking through, I pull a, a wad out, I'm gonna try and get 47 cents with as many coins as I can to clear that thing out. You all know what I'm talking about, we all do it, right? And I look and I see there's a Canadian dime. Right? It's fake money, really. Sorry, Canada. But they're, they're almost the same size as our dimes. I don't know how I got it. The last time it was in Canada was at least 10 years ago. I don't know where it came from. Somebody probably gave it to me as change. And I said, you know what? Let's just get this thing out of here. Let's get it out of there. They're not going to know it's not a real dime. Just give it to the guy and move on. And I said to myself as I was pulling up, you know, the next car, to, I'm the next car in line. And I said, but wait, Father Chris, that's not honest. I mean, nobody cares. It's not going to affect the bottom line of Dunkin' Donuts in that store or throughout the world. It's not going to affect the CEO of the company, nor the individual who's going to hand me the coffee. But it is going to affect me, because I know that I've not been honest. I know that I've, I mean, even in that small, minuscule way, I will have told a lie. And I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. So I put that dime back in the ashtray. I took another real dime out and I go to the window. So now I have, you know, the handful of change and the $2 bills and I pull up to the window and he says, that'll be two fifty-nine. dollars <laughs> real. And I said, what? I said, I just came just two days ago, it was two forty-seven. dollars I've got 47 cents. He said, well, the prices have gone up. I'm like, well, screw them, they get the dime. So I gave him the fake dime anyway. <laughs> and as I left, I said to myself, I did, I said, screw them raising 12 cents in, in two days. But then I felt terrible. I felt terrible about it. It was actually the worst cup of coffee I've ever had to drink. And not because it was bitter, but because I knew that even in spite of negotiating with myself to do the right thing, when something minor popped, I became dishonest. And I gave them fake money, right? Again, like I, like I said, I know it's not going to affect the bottom line of Dunkin' Donuts. That store is not going to feel it. They may not ever know that it happened. They're going to take that dime and think it's real money and pass it to the next guy. But in that moment, I lied. And I wasn't happy with myself. And I didn't like it. Even though it was a small, itty-bitty lie. And I think about how often do we all tell those small, itty-bitty lies, right? There's a, there's a new type of lying. This is real. Uh, research have come, researchers have established a new type of lying they call paltering. And they don't blame it anymore just on politicians. Paltering is lying by telling the truth. We've all done it. We've all been students. Our students today, you all have done this. I know it's happened in my house. When the parent says to the child, Honey, have you done your homework? And the child responds with, Mom, I wrote a paper on Tennessee Williams for my English class. Well, that's true, but that paper was due a month ago. You haven't started tonight's homework, right? You told the truth and avoided the truth. Sometimes we tell these small itty bitty lies by aggrandizing. Our beloved pastoral assistant, Greg, as you know, Greg has a beautiful, voluminous voice. And he traveled while in high school to Italy, and he'll tell you the story, I sang for the Pope. 
which is sort of true, right? But then if he tells you the rest of the story, he just happened to be in St. Peter's Square with his high school choir, and they asked him to stand up, they let him sing for a minute, and then sit back down. We don't even think the Pope was there then, was he? He was in Cleveland that week, right? <laughs> Right? But we all do that kind of stuff. Oh, I sang for the Pope. Well, you were in the Pope's house, and I gave it all I had to, you know. And yet we tell the truth, and yet we're not telling the truth. And then there's that, that, that terrible one. Every husband knows this one. We've all done it. Your wife goes shopping, leaves you at home, peaceful afternoon on a Saturday to watch college football. And as she leaves, she says, honey, take out the trash and do... X, Y, or Z. And as you sit down to enjoy the show or enjoy the game, your wife calls and says, Honey, did you take out the trash? Well, you asked me to. And then you hang up the phone and run real quick and take out the trash before she gets home and catches you. Like, look, I've never done that. I've just heard that other guys have done that. I'm just saying, all right? We all tell these itty-bitty little lies. And we think that they're nothing. But the reality of it is, little things lead to big things. And the reason that this is so devastating, the reason why we don't want to tell lies, is because that becomes who we are. We become people, men and women, of untruth. And we may think that that's a small thing, but that is something that is very egregious to the Lord. God does not like people to, tell, to, to not tell the truth. God does not like people to lie. So, Proverbs 22, 12, chapter 12, verse 22. Proverbs 12, 22 says, a, a lying tongue is an abomination, right? God doesn't like that. But one who is upright and tells the truth, it is his, he is glorious to God, loved by God. God wants us to be truthful men and women, right? He wants us to be truthful. And we even see in this beautiful epistle that we just read, we just heard from Colossians, that was read wonderfully for us, that, like, get rid of anger and wrath and malice and slander and foul talk from your mouth. And, and this great line, don't lie to one another. Don't lie to one another because you have put off the old nature. See, what, what Paul is telling us in this epistle, uh, this section from the epistle to the Colossians, is that in your baptism, the old man, the sinful man and woman that you used to be, it died in that water, the waters of baptism. And you've put on this new nature, which is Christ-like nature. And now that you've done that, you don't go back to the old ways, right? The old way, you know, that, it used to lie. And this, this new nature, doesn't lie. And he's asking you, you could get with this or you could get with that. But whatever you do, be wise. Don't go back to that. You could get with this and be a man or a woman of truth, right? You've put on the new nature. And the new nature follows Christ who says to us what? In John 14, verse 6, I am the way the truth, and the life. And that's a much more deeper verse that needs its own homily, but the point I'm making is that Jesus is telling us that he indeed himself is truthful. He is the truth. He's not a man of truth. He is the man of truth and has asked us to follow him by being truthful people. Last part of why, you know, of, of why we should do this, sorry, why we shouldn't lie, is because you become false to yourself, not just false to the world, but you become false to yourself. You don't even really know who you are anymore, right? Abraham Lincoln is credited with saying, there is no man who is so smart as to be able to tell lies continually. I don't know how the, the saying really goes, but what he basically says, I butchered it, but what he's saying is, you can't keep, uh, there's no man who's smart enough to, to live a life of lies, because you tell a lie and then you have to cover up that lie with another lie, which covers up another lie and another lie and another lie, and all of a sudden, you don't have a memory good enough to remember all the lies you've told. Right? And you've become a man or a woman of dishonesty. And usually, if not always, you get caught in those lies. And so we don't want to be men and women who are dishonest. That being said, let us ask the question, why do we do that? Why do we lie? Why do we tell these tales? There are some people who are clearly, clearly like psych psychotic, psychopathic, who just who are, are, are perennial liars, that's not the majority of us. Why do the rest of us, the majority of us, tell lies? I think it's based in fear. I think it's based in fear. Think about the position of the child. Why would they lie about their homework? They're afraid that their mom or dad may yell at them. They're afraid, perhaps, to disappoint them. They're afraid, perhaps, that they might not get a good grade. 
You think about our, our pastoral assistant, Greg. Why would he aggrandize that tale? Why do we all do that and tell stories bigger than they are? Because we're afraid that if we don't, we may not be loved or accepted by other people. We, not, we may not be uh, great in their eyes, loved in their eyes. And then why would any husband ever tell his wife a tale? Fear. Just fear. We're just afraid, all right? <laughs> because we don't want to disappoint her. Because we love her. We want her to think we are the king of her world and that she is our queen and our princess and that we do everything that we do because of her, right? Fear motivates us very often, if not always. Fear is the motivator to lie. And so in becoming or in putting off the old nature and putting on the new nature of Christ, it means that we must first be victors over fear and that always we tell the truth in every single thing we do. And that leads us to today's practical point on the way of the warrior saint. How do we do that? How do we conquer that fear so that we can always tell the truth? I think it's pretty simple. Start in the little things. Start in the little things. If you can't be victorious in the little things, there ain't no way you're going to win the big things. Right? If you cannot tell your parents the truth that, okay, I haven't started my homework yet, then you're never going to be able to tell the truth when it comes to something that is essential to life, right? Because we build on those little habits, those little habits, those little things build us up to who we are. And so the, the, no husband who ever tells his wife, I've done the garbage when he hasn't done the garbage, is going to be able to share his deepest emotions and, and fears and angers and loves with her because he has built up a pattern, a, a, a pattern of falsehood, right? And so in the little things, let us start this moment. I want to leave you with this today. This is our practical point, which is Christ-like living in every single thing that you do, in every single word that you say, in every single place that you go, at every single moment of your day. Be men and women of truth. That means you've got to tell the truth, even if you know you're going to get busted. And even if it means to you that someone, that your fears are realized and someone who you want to admire and affirm and love you may choose not to admire and affirm and love you, still tell the truth. Be men and women who always, no matter what, speak words of truth and start with the little itty bitties. Once you have gained control over telling truth in all of the little steps, you then move to the medium steps so that you can then move to the big steps, right? It becomes a pattern, a habit of life that we are men and women of truth. Men and women who follow Jesus Christ, having put off, as, we, as Paul told us this morning, put off the old nature and clothed with the new nature, that which is Christ-like living, that is warrior saintness, which is men and women of truth. Do you think you can do that? I think you can do that. I know that it's in each and every one of you to, in all things, at every moment, give yourself no leeway and to speak the truth in every word that you say. May our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is himself the truth, bless and keep you. Amen.